The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, Whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of St. James the Greater, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus. He was the brother of John, the beloved and both of them were sons of Zebedee. And we know that James, together with Peter and John, were closest to Jesus. They were the closest circle of Jesus among the apostles. That is why many of the intimate moments in the life of Jesus were witnessed by Peter, James, and John. Remember the transfiguration. Only the three of them were invited by Jesus to go up with him on Mount Tabor. And only these three apostles, including James, witness the transfiguration of Jesus. He also witnessed the raising of the dead daughter of Jairus. And at the Garden of Gethsemane, James, together with Peter and John, also witnessed the agony of Jesus. Among the twelve apostles of Jesus, it was St. James who first died as a martyr. He was beheaded by King Herod Agrippa in the year 42 or 44, more or less ten years after the death of Jesus. His body was buried in Jerusalem, but in the ninth century, his relics were transferred to Compostela, Spain, which has become until now a popular center for pilgrimages. My dear brothers and sisters, on this feast day of 
St. James, our gospel is one of the least flattering moments in the life of James and his brother John. Dahil kapistahan ngayon ni Santiago, aasahan sana natin na yung Ibanghelyo ay tungkol sa kanyang mabubuting gawa, tungkol sa mga bagay na pwede nating purihin siya. Pero parang taliwas yung narinig natin sa ating Ibanghelyo ngayon. Dahil sa Ibanghelyo natin ngayon, narinig natin yung ambisyon ng magkapatid na Santiago at Juan na ipinahayag ng kanilang nanay kay Jesus. Siguro pinakiusapan nila yung kanilang nanay na siyang magsabi kay Jesus dahil naisip siguro nila hindi matatanggihan ni Jesus ang kanilang nanay. They expressed their ambition to be seated at the places of honor with Jesus. But Jesus was quick to ask, Are you willing to drink the chalice that I am going to drink? Are you willing to suffer the consequences of what you are asking for? Alam niyo ba talaga yung hinihingi ninyo? At handa ba kayong harapin anuman ang consequence, kahihinatnan, ng inyong hinihingi sa akin. And James and John answered, Yes, Lord, we can. We can drink the chalice that you are going to drink. And in fairness to James, we know, as I have mentioned earlier, that he was indeed willing to drink of the chalice of suffering and share the chalice of suffering with Jesus. Totoo naman na pinanindigan niya ang kanyang salita kay Jesus na handa siyang harapin ang kahinatnan ng kanyang hinihiling kay Jesus. Siya ang kauna-unahang alagad ni Jesus na mamatay bilang martir. We saw in the life of St. James that he was indeed willing to drink of the cup of suffering with Jesus. And this he showed in the manner that he offered his life. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a very good reminder to all of us that everything that we do, every word that we say, every decision and choices that we make, has consequences. Sa pagtatanong ni Jesus, handa ka bang tanggapin ang pagdurusa na aking haharapin? Handa ka bang makibahagi sa aking paghihirap dahil sa hinihingi mong yan? Pinapaalala sa atin ni Jesus na ang lahat ng ating gagawin, lahat ng ating sasabihin, ang bawat desisyon at pagpili natin ay may kahihinatnan. Kaya mahalaga na pinag-aaralan ang bawat ginagawa, pinag-iisipan ang bawat sasabihin, pinagdarasalan ang bawat pagpili at bawat desisyon na sana ang ating gagawin, sasabihin, pipiliin at desisyon na gagawin ay magkaroon lamang ng mabuting kahihinatnan. That is a very important reminder for all of us that we have to see, to discern, and to pray for the consequences of everything that we do and say. Kaya nga sana bago tayo magsasalita, simpleng bagay man yan, pabiru man yan, sana maisip natin ano kaya ang implications ng aking sasabihin. Meron kayang masasaktan. Meron kayang malalagay sa alanganin. Meron kayang mapapahamak. 
dahil sa aking sasabihin. Sa bawat desisyon na ating gagawin, sana isipin din natin ano kaya ang magiging consequence nitong aking desisyon. Ito ba'y makakabuti sa nakararami o ito ba ay para sa sarili ko lamang? Kaya nga po kapag ako'y nag-i-interview ng mga ikakasal, palagi kong tinatanong, nahaintindihan ba talaga ninyo ang buhay na papasukin ninyo? Nahaintindihan ba ninyo talaga ang consequences ng sacrament of marriage? Baka kasi ang naiisip lang ay yung hanggang araw ng kasal. Baka nakakalimutan na pagkatapos noon, ay kailangan nilang harapin ang isang habang buhay na commitment na siyang consequence din naman ng kanilang pagpili at ng kanilang desisyon. Are you willing to drink the cup? Kaya nga mga minamahal na kapatid, minsan iniisip ko, kaya siguro may mga panalangin, mga bagay na hinihingi natin sa Diyos na hindi agad-agad niya binibigay, hindi naman siguro dahil madamot ang Diyos, dahil mabuti ang kanyang kalooban, siguro hindi agad-agad niya binibigay, dahil baka hindi pa tayo handa na tanggapin yung mga hinihingi natin. Baka kailangan pa tayong ihanda ng Diyos para sa mga bagay na gusto nating hingin mula sa Kanya. Are you willing to drink the cup? Are you willing to face the consequences of what you are asking for? And even in our Christian life, Jesus is also telling us, You want to follow me? You want to be my disciple? You want to be called a Christian? Then, what are you willing to offer? What are you willing to risk? What are you willing to suffer, to sacrifice in order to be true to what you want? Because the truth is, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many of us who are proud to be called Christians but do not really live up to the word. Marami sa atin na ipinagmamalaki na tayo yung mga Kristiyano, pero hindi naman natin handang sundin ang kalooban ng Diyos, ang utos ng Diyos, at ang mga utos ng ating simbahan. Are we really willing to drink the cup? My dear brothers and sisters, following Jesus will not be always easy. But, with the grace of God, we will be able to do it. And this is beautifully expressed by St. Paul in our first reading today. Drinking the cup of suffering, following Jesus, being a true Christian, we must expect to be afflicted in every way. But St. Paul said, but we will not be constrained perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Hindi madali ang pagsunod kay Jesus. Maraming pagsubok, maraming paghihirap, maraming pagtitiis, pero hindi tayo matatalo hindi tayo maibabagsak dahil si Jesus ang ating lakas. At sa pamamagitan ng mga haharapin nating pagsubok, tiisin at pag-uusig sa buhay, lalong tumitingkad si Jesus sa ating buhay. My dear brothers and sisters, today, Jesus asks each one of us, are you willing to drink the chalice that I am going to drink? Like St. James, may we also be able to say, Yes, Lord, we can. 
Yes, Lord, we will for you.